Hey there, you awesome people. I hope your day has been nothing short of fantastic. Welcome back to a brand new episode of What If Deku Ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Izuka used to be crookless, but that all changed when he sunk his teeth into an unusual fruit, granting him the power to stretch his body like rubber. With this newfound ability, he's on a quest to become the ultimate hero. Don't forget to shower some appreciation onto the incredible author responsible for this fanfiction. The link is conveniently waiting for you in the description box down below. If you're totally vibing with this what if scenario, drop me a comment and let your thoughts be known. And while you're at it, don't miss out on other mind-blowing what ifs on this channel. Alright, without further ado, let's dive straight into this video. Izuku, do you have everything you need? Asked Inko as Izuku was getting ready for the first day of school at UA. Yes mom, I have everything, replied Izuku as he tied his shoes, I had everything prepared last night, and I checked again this morning. As he opened the door, Inko called out to him one more time. Izuku, said Inko softly, I'm proud of you. You look so cool now. Go out and show them all what you can do. Of course. Smiled Izuku, giving a little laugh, I'm off. With a jaunty wave, he closed the door behind him to set off to his new school. And don't think I didn't notice you with three girls, cackled Inko as soon as she was sure Izuku was gone. Once I'm done, you'll be having them all plus more. That means more grandbabies to play with. Izuku didn't know why a chill went up his spine, but he decided to ignore it. He was in his new grey uniform with a red tie, black pants, and his usual red sneakers. Quickly jogging to the bus station, he soon met up with Momo and Ichako. Morning. Greeted Izuku while the other two greeted him back. I'm so excited, said a slightly shaking Ichako, it's time for us to take our first steps to become heroes. Indeed, it is rather exciting, agreed Momo. The bus quickly arrived before transporting them to the nearest stop to Yue, where they walked the rest of the way there and stopping at the entrance. Salutations. Greeted Tenyu with his hands chopping in the air, a fine morning for us to be able to take the first step into Yue. Yay, yay, let's reveal our classroom assignments, said Itsuka excitedly. They had all been given their homeroom via email, but had not shared it, as they wanted to reveal it all in person at the same time. Alright, ready? Asked Itsuka, holding a piece of paper with her classroom assignment, as did Izuku, Tenya, Momo, and Ichako, alright, on three. One, two, three. They all opened it to each other at the third count. All, oh, am I the only one at 1B? Pouted Itsuka as everybody else had 1A, talk about unfortunate. It's alright, we can still have lunch together, placated Izuku, and our assignments should be similar to each other that we can study together. Seeing Itsuka giving him the pout as well as puppy eyes, Izuku couldn't help but give Itsuka a hug. Unbeknownst to him and Tenya, Itsuka gave a victory sign to a huffing Ichako and Momo. They decided to let her have this one, as she was going to be in a different classroom than the rest of them. We should get to our respective classrooms, started Tenya, it would not bode well of us to be late to the first day of class. The others agreed and quickly went into the school building, with Tenya having the map of the school out. They soon found their respective classrooms on the top floor of the building, with 1A and 1B next to each other. After saying goodbye with Itsuka for now, Izuku, Momo, Achako, and Tenya stepped into their new classroom. The class slowly filled up as more and more students began to show up. Kazuki glared at Izuku when he showed up, but chose not to say anything as he took his seat, which was a rather huge improvement than before. Not to mention the glare felt less hateful and more, rival-like. It was something to think about for Izuku. So you're here, Jiro, said a voice. Izuku turned around to see Tsuyu Asui standing there in her uniform. Ah, Asui-san, greeted Izuku. Call me Tsu-chan, replied Tsuyu, I prefer it that way. Alright, but I insist that you call me by my first name then, replied Izuku before quickly introducing Tsuyu to everybody else, and how they met. Too noisy, said a voice from the door, causing all the students to stop and look to the source near the door. There, they saw what seemed to be a large yellow caterpillar crawling on the ground before it turned to reveal a shaggy man's face. If you're here to socialize, then get out, said the man as he took out a juice pouch from within his sleeping bag. He then proceeded to completely drain the juice box in on Epic Suck. This is the hero course. Who the hell is that? Thought most of the students in silence as the man got out of the sleeping bag. Aizawa Shota looked around at the class before giving off his first statements, 8 seconds. That's how long it took you lot to calm down. Time is limited, and you kids aren't rational enough. I'm Aizawa Shota, your homeroom teacher. While most of the people blinked in shock, Izuku narrowed his eyes. He had a rather vast knowledge of most pro heroes, being able to recognize most of them by a glance, but this pro wasn't someone he was familiar with. Or rather, he couldn't recognize him from the top of his head. Now then, this might be sudden, but put this on and go to the field, stated Shota, pulling out a gym uniform from his sleeping bag. Where and why did you have that in there? Thought most of the students. Before anyone could move, Shota's phone began to ring. Shota had planned to ignore it when it started singing, am I a dog? A bear? A mouse? But most importantly, I'm the principal of UA. I am Nezu. 
Shota immediately picked up the phone, silently cursing the fact that the principal could hack into the school given phones, and force everyone to have that ringtone when he called them. Azawa-kun, please don't tell me you forgot about our little deal for allowing you to take young Shinso into the reserved ranking. Asked Nezu, causing Shota to suddenly shiver. No, I'm taking them to the entrance ceremony right now, whispered Shota. Oh good, one would think you might have forgotten and just take them straight to the cork apprehension test, so you could expel whomever you deemed unworthy, just to make room or lower your own paperwork, replied Nezu as he sipped his tea. No, 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 of course not, shivered Shota, though once they're done with it, I'm having them do it right after. Of course, as you are allowed to do so, nodded Nezu, well then, go ahead and bring them here. Sekijiro-san has already confirmed with me he is ready to bring his class over. And I have already sent a teacher to fetch Shinso-san. With that note, Nezu hung up the phone. Change of plans, grumbled Shota, just bring your gym uniforms with you. They should be located in your desk. Everyone should have been assigned a seat, so just grab it and go. We'll pass by the locker rooms on the way so you can put them in there. Minutes later, they were all gathered in a gymnasium that was mostly used for the Gen Ed students, with a total of only 41 students. Izuku managed to find Itsuka, and they sat next to each other, with Momo, Ichako, and Tenya on his right. The line between Itsuka and Izuku was the dividing line of class 1A and 1B. Though both of them were curious about Hitashi Shinso, who wasn't in any of the classes. Hello students. Said Nezu as he appeared on the podium, and welcome to UAHI. You are the few selected students who have been chosen to attend the heroics course. Take pride in yourself, as you have managed to take the first step. As the students smiled, Nezu continued, but be warned. As we are a freestyle education, the teachers also have the power to do whatever they deem necessary. At this, Nezu leaned forward ominously, causing a few students to gulp. Nonetheless, I do hope you all apply yourselves and become outstanding heroes. At this junction of time, we will have Miss Kayama hand out your welcome gifts. Mr. Yamada has decided to be your personal musical background director. Oh yeah, putting on some sick background beats. Shouted Present Mick as he began putting some beats. Present Mick, please wait until I'm completely done, said Nezu, forcing Present Mick to lower the volume. Anyways, please refer to your packet for any questions, and if you need any clarification, please do ask. As you all know, all the teachers here are also pro heroes who have devoted some of their time to guiding the youth. Hmm, and some of them look delicious, said the rated hero, Midnight, causing quite a few boys to squirm in their seat. You may have noticed that the foundation hero teacher's picture is curiously absent from the orientation packet you all received, continued Nezu, ignoring Midnight for now, well, it wouldn't bode well to ruin the surprise. Now, I imagine you're all wondering why there are 41 of you here, instead of 40. Most of the students nodded and turned their heads to Shinso, who shifted uncomfortably. That's because that student you're all rudely staring at will be the 41st student of the Department of Heroics, announced Nezu, causing most of them to snap their heads back at Nezu. Hitashi Shinso will be tested to see if he will deserve to be put into the reserve ranking, fall short and be put back to general studies, or perhaps even replace one of you, should you fail to meet standards. The students gulped at this and stood up a bit straighter, Izuku and his friends included, though Tenyu couldn't sit up straighter even if he tried, as he was already quite stiff. We will be making a few changes in this year's courses, so don't rely on the knowledge of your upper classmates information. Nonetheless, welcome to you a high heroics course. Nezu finished off. The rest of the orientation went smoothly, Midnight handing out the gifts while making a few comments here and there, licking her lips while she gazed at the students as if they were prey. Quite a few uprising in some pants made themselves known to the owner only. Once done, Shota immediately took his students out to the fields, taking Hitashi Shinso with them. Mitsuka gazed at Izuku's back as the group separated. Her teacher was taking them to the guidance counselor office. So, who's that boy? Asked Sasuna Takage, a female with green hair, he looks cute. That's my childhood friend Izuku, replied Itsuka nonchalantly, slightly glaring at Momo and Ichako, who were right next to him while they left. She also noticed another girl that seemed to trail behind them. The boy you keep talking about. Asked Yukadai, a pale girl with black hair, styled with a bob cut, the one you want to jump so badly. Yui had said this with a completely blank face. Yui. Hissed Sasuka in embarrassment. What? What? I want to know more. Said Sasuna, poking at Itusuka. Ryako Yanagi, a female with gray hair that covered one of her eyes, seemed to be interested too. Please be quiet, ordered Vlad King, causing the girls to stop. Now, here is. Tashinori Yagi was sitting in the faculty room, going over the files of each student in both class 1A and 1B, as he would be their foundational heroic studies teacher. The upperclassmen all had another teacher that would be continuing their own job, but for the most part, most of them were interning at different hero agencies. He would be more focused on the freshman as well as his successor. Speaking of the successor, Tashinori curiously glanced at who would be his homeroom teacher. A second later, Tashinori felt an incoming headache as he pinched his nose in displeasure, when A has Aizawa-kun. They're going to be in for a surprise. 
A second later, he frowned. I hope he doesn't force young Midoriya to use one for all. Well with Midoriya's imagination, I'm sure he can make something up to cover that up. Indeed, he had told Izuku about one for all and his source, all for one. It was rather inevitable as Izuku did talk with the remnants of one for all, and the very first user had mentioned him. Gran Torino had joined in with them talking about the history of both one for all and all for one, as well as helping train Izuku. At that thought, Tashinori couldn't help but shiver in fear, as his mind flashed back to his own training with Gran Torino. The students of Wana Plus Shinso were all in their gym uniform and walking towards the field. Hey, I remember you. Said Ichako to Shinso. You're the one who helped stop that fight with that jerk skinhead. Hmm? Oh it's you, grunted Shinso. Thanks for stopping him from being a bigger jerk with just words, cheered Ichako. I'm Ichako Uraka. Stop a fight? Asked Izuku curiously. Indeed, he did so, not a Tenya. The student that you saved started insulting you. I reprimanded him for such behavior, and he threatened with violence. It was thanks to Shinso that no violence occurred. Though curiously, how did you do so? And how come you are in reserve ranking? That is something quite new. Shinso winced at the question, but ultimately decided to answer the question, so as to get it over with. It didn't look like a Chaco would stop asking. My quirk is brainwashing. If someone responds to me, I can control them, though it is slightly limited. Shinso was already preparing for the usual responses that he heard his whole life from his peers. How villainous it was. How evil it was. He could see Ichako already shutting her mouth while Tanya began to wave his arm. That's awesome. Shouted Izuku, a few sparkles in his eyes. It took a few moments for Shinso to register Izuku's words, but after blinking a few times the baffled student could help but ask, Say wa. Your quirk would be very useful in rescue missions or capturing villains, not in Momo. You could be a huge help in say disaster areas. Victims have a tendency to panic despite people telling them to remain calm. With a quirk, you could easily control the situation and direct them to the safest path. Villains have a tendency to either monologue or just shout a lot, added Izuku. You could easily subdue villains if they aren't paying attention, and bring a halt to destruction. Most heroes have to beware of any collateral damage they might incur. Now Lady's quirk has gotten her into quite a few trouble before, being unable to shrink in time before hitting a building. Shinso didn't know what to say to this, so he merely numbly nodded. Ah, but you would have had trouble in the practical with your quirk, noted Achako. Does your quirk work on robots? No, sighed Shinso, that's why I didn't really get a good score on that. It was actually because your homeroom teacher saw the confrontation and was interested in me that I got this reserve ranking thing going for me. They could easily cancel it if I'm not up to par. I am sure you will do well, stated Tenya, waving his arm once more, but you mentioned you know our homeroom teacher. What is he like? Before Shinso could reply, they had already made it to the gym field. They were all wondering what was happening when Shota made the announcement of having a quirk apprehension test. Eh? But what about the guidance counselor meeting? Asked Achako, having read the itinerary. If you're looking to be heroes, you have no time for such leisurely events, drawled Shota. I would have skipped the entrance ceremony, but Nezu was insistent that I have you all attend that at least. You all know by now that we teachers have the freedom to do whatever we deem necessary. Shota turned around to look at them all in the eye, causing a few sweat drops to break out. You all remember these eight activities you all did in middle school, right? Asked Aizawa as he held out his phone to show the standard gym test that allowed no quirk usage. This country still insists on forbidding quirks, when calculating the average of these records, which makes no rational sense. Of course, the Department of Education is procrastinating on this. Shota gave them all a glance, locking on to Izuku, Midoriya, you finished the practical exam with the highest score, right? What was your record on the softball pitch in junior high? 77 meters, replied Izuku, causing Katsuki to growl. His own record was only 67, though he had been training a lot more, positive that he was sure he could surpass his old record without his quirk. Good. Now try it with your quirk, stated Shota as he tossed a softball to Izuku, do whatever you need to do, as long as you don't leave this circle. Izuku glanced at the ball before looking out to the field, while Laizawa had the app out to record the score. Izuku seemed to ponder a bit before giving a slight grin. He stomped his legs into the ground, cracking the ground a bit. I may have said do anything you want, but you better have a good reason for burying your legs in there, stated Aizawa. Izuku just gave a small laugh, shishishi, you'll see. Suddenly, Izuku twisted his waist all the way around, rotating his spine and causing most of his classmates to freak out at that sight. What the hell? Shouted a male with red spiky hair, that's crazy. He's very flexible, Jiro, said Saya, putting her large finger on her frog-like face, that didn't detract from her looks, but rather made her seem even cuter. Flexible. That's far beyond what anyone should be able to do. Shouted a girl with curiously long yellow plugs. The students watched as Izuku made what seemed to be his 25th rotation before finally stopping, letting them see his twisted mid-body. You all might want to stand back a little further, warned Izuku before he started to unwind. Heeding his words, they all took three steps back, including Shota. 
Soon enough, as Izuku was uncoiling his body, he began to kick up dust as he kept spinning, his right arm extending a bit more and more. What in the world? Coughed a blonde haired kid with a black lightning bolt on the side of his hair. He's spinning fast enough that he can whip up dust, coughed another who had a bird head. As Izuku was down to his last coil, green arcs of lightning suddenly danced around his body, though not many could see it. Shota had pulled his goggles down to protect his eyes, and narrowed his eyes, as he could smell burnt ozone. Smash! Shouted Izuku as he fired off the softball. He had decided to use one for all at 55%, his current maximum controlled output besides speed. Though he could go higher, 55% was his current limit of control, as the chances of misfiring would increase as the output increased, though it would be hard for him to throw it into a building with such a wide field. Still, it wasn't a chance he was risking. The air was displaced with a shockwave as the ball flew up into the sky. As the dust settled, the students could only blink and stare in shock at Izuku. Aizawa looked down at his phone when it gave him the results and blinked. 1749.7 meters. Who, not bad thought Shota before turning towards the crowd and showing the results, it's important for us to know our limits. This is the most rational step to form the foundation of a hero. 1749.7 meters. Seriously. Said the same blonde hair kid. Wow, I knew Zuku was hiding something about that lightning appearing around his body, but I didn't think he was that strong thought Momo, remembering how the others told her that Izuku had destroyed a huge foe villain, did he unlock it after he met me? Both Tenya and Achako had seen Izuku use this before and were not surprised. Instead, Achako was focused on how cool Izuku looked right now. We get to use our quirks for this sounds fun. Said another student with pink skin and hair, along with horns. Most of the students seemed to agree with her statement. Before anyone could say anything else, Izuku finally recognized who Aizawa Shota was by the goggles he had worn to block out the dust. Ah, you're the eraser hero. Eraserhead. Snapped Izuku, you specialize villain capture, and can erase quirks with your quirk just by looking at them. Eraserhead. Whispered one student, never heard of him. He's an underground hero, said another, he doesn't like to come out on TV much. Fe, scoffed Shota as he took his goggles off, though slightly pleased that someone recognized him despite he never appeared on television, and mostly worked during the night, fun, you say. Were you planning to spend your three years here having fun while trying to become a hero? Most of the students fell silent at this, while Shota began to give off a maniacal grin, fine then. Let's make this a game. Whoever comes in last place in all these tests will be judged hopeless, and the punishment game will be expulsion. Eh? Shouted the majority of students as Shota slowly glared at them all, locking eyes on Shinso. Shinso gulped as Shota nodded his head, conveying the much clear message. Even as a reserve ranking, he would not be safe from this either. We're free to do whatever we want about the circumstances of our students, glared Shota as he pushed his bangs off his forehead to reveal a mocking expression, Welcome, to you a high heroics course. Many students had looks of fear before gritting down with determination. A few had unchanging facial expressions. Katsuki just looked excited. One such exception was the shortest student, a midget with giant grape-shaped balls on his scalp, had a rather different emotion than all of them. At first glance, people would think the student had gone into shock that there was no facial expression, or that he was very calm. Instead, the reality was the boy was daydreaming. What was his dream, per se? I want to be a teacher here. But the boy as he mentally drooled at what he could do with such power. He was already imaging himself sitting on a throne as high school girls were dressed in bloomers and such while serving him. He was promptly slapped on the head by Tsai, who could tell what he was thinking. Echako was about to raise her voice when she remembered what Principal Nezu had forewarned them all about. If you were hoping to hang out at the local McDonald's after school, then too bad, continued Shota, it's a hero's job to restore order without fail or rest. The next three years here will be full of tribulations, one after another. Go beyond and plus alter. I expect you all to overcome this. Looks of determination filled all the students' faces as they prepared themselves. Trial 1. 50 meter dash. Shota began call students up two at a time to the starting line, going by ascending student number. This, in turn, helped introduce who they were as they got to the starting line. First up were Mina Ashido, the pink-skinned girl, and Yuga Aoyama, the blonde haired boy with perfectly combed hair and a rather giant belt. Izuka recognized him from the entrance exam, one of the students he saved by distracting the robot. Let me show you all just how dazzling my naval laser is, and just how creative I can be, boasted Yuga with a French accent in his words. He turned around, his back facing the track while Mina got into position. As soon as the robot set start, Yuga jumped into the air. Like this. Laughed Yuga as he fired a laser beam from his navel, propelling him forward far faster than Mina could run. However, one second after using it, Yuga stopped, letting his momentum carry before hitting the ground. He quickly got back up after Mina already passed him, who was using her quirk acid. She had taken off her shoes so as to be able to shoot acid from her feet, which she used to skate across the track. 
Yudu managed to get back up after falling and propelled himself to the finishing line once more, though not before Mina finished first, getting a record of 5.25 seconds, while Yuga got 5.51 seconds. If I use my navel laser for more than one second, I get a stomachache, said Yuga with flashing stars around him, while the people around him just stared at him in confusion. Nice job Mina, complimented the spiky red hair student. Thanks. You better do a good job too, replied Mina as she gave him a high five, no more being your old self in middle school, okay. The second pair to go was Tenya Iida and Suyu Asi. Being a contest of speed, Tenya sprinted across the finish line in 3.04 seconds, while Tsuyu, despite speed not being her best, managed to get 5.58 seconds, hopping across the finish line. Looking good, complimented Izuku to Tsuyu and Tenya as they walked back into the group. If only it was longer, sighed Tenya. I could only change up to third gear with this much room. Kiro, I doubt anyone will be beating your time, said Tsuyu. The third pair up was Achako Araka and Mashiro Ojiro. Achako immediately began using her court to lighten up her clothes and shoes. Mashara launched himself forward with his powerful tail as soon as it started, running when he landed before launching himself once more with a powerful whack of his tail, getting a time of 5.49 seconds. Achako finished in 7.15 seconds, managing to shave off a good 0.11 seconds off her old score. The 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th pair all also went up, comprised of Denki Kaminari, Ijiro Kirishima, Koji Koda, Rikido Sato, Meizo Shoji, Kyoka Jiro, Hanta Sero, and Vimakagi Tokoyami, all getting varying times from 5.20 to 7.18 seconds. It wasn't until the 8th pair the students would be in awe after Tanya's speed. Shoto Todoroki, a male with a rather unique appearance that would cause many females to swoon, and Toru Higakure, the invisible girl, were up, and at the sound of the horn, Shoto blasted himself forward with an ice pillar he created. As he began descending down, he created an ice slide, allowing him to slide across the finish line in 3.15 seconds. Toru, despite not having a court to help her go faster in any way, managed to show just how fit she was by crossing the finish line in 6.24 seconds. The only real way they could tell she crossed the line was because she was wearing clothes. Finally, it was Izuku and Katsuki's turn. The two of them gave each other a small glare before getting into position. Explosive Turbo. Shouted Katsuki as he used explosions to accelerate himself forward, earning him a time of 3.95 seconds. However, this was overshadowed by Izuku, who dashed forward before flinging his arms out forward, grabbing the ground before flinging himself forward in one burst. 2.95 seconds, announced the robot recorder. Damn, he's strong and fast, muttered Ijiro, that's manly. Shoto narrowed his eyes at Izuku before suddenly noticing his left hand flickering in flames. He quickly crossed his arms, allowing steam to arise from his arms. Izuku Midori thought Shoto to himself, he's someone to look out for. Momo revealed to them all that she would not be outdone, creating roller blades and a high-powered fan on her back to accelerate her to the finish line, getting a time of 3.02 seconds. Mineta Minoru, though having a short stature and a perverted mind, used his cork by grabbing four balls on each hand, and threw them in a line on his path. He quickly bounced on each one, jumping forward as fast he could, while also throwing even more down the lane, getting a time of 7.21 seconds, the worst out of all of them. It was rather unlucky just because of his stature. Finally, the last one of them was Shinso by himself. He tried to psych himself up, but ended up with a time of 7.02 seconds only. Shinso cursed the fact that his core could do nothing to help him, but he couldn't complain. He knew he was lacking even after going through that hellish training period. Toru was still faster than him, and all she had was invisibility. All those years of people pegging him as a villain had affected him a bit. Trial 2. Grip Test. As they were all walking to the gym where the grip test would be administered, Shinso found himself walking next to Izuku. Must be lucky to have such a useful and flashy core to be able to use on these tests, muttered Shinso, thinking nobody could hear him. However, Izuku did hear him as he turned towards him. Hey, you have a useful cork yourself, frowned Izuku, thinking back to the time when he was corkless. So much pain and suffering had occurred during that time period before Katsuki had shoved that fruit down his throat. Speaking of which, he had to find some time to thank him for that. Well it's not helping me with these tests, mumbled Shinso, I can brainwash others not do their best. Izuku closed his eyes to ponder about this dilemma before coming to a solution. Well, is it possible to brainwash yourself? Asked Izuku. Shinso was about to reply that it was a stupid question when he thought about it. He had never really tried it, and why would he? Hear me out, you know about those feats from the past before quirks came out. Explained Izuku, how mother lifted a car by herself to rescue her child. And how the body naturally uses only up to 80 to 90% of your body's true power, unless you're either running on adrenaline or hysterical strength. Use your quirk and tell your body to remove those safety limits. But don't go too far off, or you might hurt yourself. 
Shinso looked in surprise at Izuku's analysis, never have thought about trying that himself. Before he could ask for more detail, Shota was already passing the grip test machine to everyone, telling them to all do it at once so as to save time. Shinso glanced down at the grip machine before quickly gripping into it as hard as he could. Seeing that he only had a result of 50 kilograms, Shinso decided to try out Izuku's idea. You can do better, whispered Shinso to himself before replying yes to himself once more, feeling a bit foolish. Suddenly, he felt something wash over him while feeling dazed. His own eyes looked blank as he stared out into the distance. So this is how my quirk feels to others thought Shinso to himself. Okay, how do I give a command to myself if I can't talk? Do I just mentally yell at myself to grip harder? Soon as he thought of that, his body obeyed, gripping harder than he thought he could. His quirk stopped when a stab of pain hit his system, breaking him out of the daze. He glanced down to see his fingers red, but smiled when his score had increased to 60 kilograms. Meanwhile, Izuku was wrapping his arm around grip area, going round and round, tightening every time and increasing his score, before finally stopping and gripping it, getting a score of 720 kilograms. The only ones who would come remotely close were Shoji with 640 kilograms, Sato with 580 kilograms after consuming sugar, and Momo, who created an industrial grade clamp to get 700 kilograms. Trial 3. Standing long jump. Izuku watched as the students tried to use their quirks to aid them in this, going two at a time again. The only ones who had excelled beyond the other students, for now, had been Aoyama and Suyu. Though he was intrigued at Koji Koda, he had called in a flock of birds for him to jump on and carry him forward. Izuku watched Tenyu almost clear the sandbox, using his engine to propel him farther forward. Achako barely cleared it, though almost throwing up as she did so. Shoto was another one who easily cleared by blasting himself off an ice pillar again. I believe he's the other recommendation student via practical, said Momo as she was also waiting for her turn, of course, considering whom his father is, it is to be expected. Izuku blinked as was about to ask who that was when he heard his name called up. Kazuki was already revved up and blasted his way past the sandbox. Izuku, however, had to ask if he was allowed to slingshot himself. No, replied Shota, you can extend your arm onto the ground after you jump like Sero did with his tape quirk, but not before. Izuku frowned, as he wanted to try something different, but not actually use one for all. A few seconds later, an idea hit him. He quickly inhaled as much air as he could, suddenly inflating himself to the surprise of others. He slowly twisted his body once more, this time with only four rotations. Then he jumped as high as he could while positioning himself so his head would be facing down, and exhaled. The sudden release of air from his mouth managed to gain enough force to propel him clear out of the sandbox while spiraling forward. Erg, that's going to be a bit of cleanup, groaned Shota as he saw grains of sand scattered all over the ground. Momo also managed to clear the sandbox by creating springs beneath her feet, as well as a makeshift glider on her arms. Sadly, the worst score was Mineta, who could only bounce on his ball on the initial platform, and having no forward momentum as well as a small body, did not get far. Trail 4. Sustained Side Jumps. Mineta made up for some of his failures by creating clumps of balls next to him, and kept bouncing off them with ease, thanks to his short stature. Izuku managed to handle it with ease as well, as his rubber body did not feel the strain as most people did. Not to mention his training to use the ghost perplexing step had involved such stress. Tenyu showed his creativity by turning his leg engines on and off on each leg separate times. Trial 5. Bull Throw. Since Izuku had done it already, he was excused from doing it again. Surprisingly though, he ended up in third place on this event. Achako had gotten infinity on her throw, while Momo created a cannon and fired the ball into the distance, getting a score of 2.8 kilometers. Kazuki growled in anger as he only managed to clear a score of 760.2 meters, even with his recent increased training. Trial 6. Endurance run. Though seemingly simple, Momo blew the competition by creating a motor scooter, along with a solar charger on it. Even Izuku, Tenya, Kazuki, and Shoto's stamina were no match for her. The first to drop out though was Mineta, followed by Toru and Shinso. Trial 7. Seated Toe Touch. Otsuyu showed how flexible she was due to her quirk, Izuku blew the competition out of the water when he showed he could bend all the way down and back up in a complete rotation. Aoyama tried to flashy show off, but instead embarrassed himself by accidentally dropping his belt and pants. Almost got it, half Momo as she leaned forward, her assets pressing down on her legs. Hero course is the best, commented Mineta as he stared at Momo, only to get a slap from Shota to get him to pay attention. Try late. Sit-ups. This one ended up being rather purely physical, as nobody had any quirks that could help them get a better score, except for maybe Shoto, who created a small film of ice to keep himself from sweating. Katsuki glared at Izuku as he matched him going up and down. Soon, the trials were all over, and everyone was nervous for their results. I'll be posting scores up now, said Shota as he fiddled with his phone, the total is the aggregate sum of each of your scores. 
Reciting them one by one would be a waste of time and energy, so I'll be disclosing them all at once. With a tap on his phone, it projected a whole screen with their ranking. Well most started from the top, Shinso started from the bottom. First, Izuku Midoriya. Second, Momoyo Hirozu. Third, Shoto Todoroki. Fourth, Katsuki Bakugo. Fifth, Iida Tenya. Sixth, Fumikage Tokoyami. Seventh, Meizo Shoji. Eighth, Mashirao Jiro. Ninth, Ijiro Kirishima. Tenth, Mina Ashido. Eleventh, Achako Araka. Twelfth, Koji Koda. Thirteenth, Rikido Sato. Fourteenth, Tsuyu Asi. Fifteenth, Yuga Aoyama. Sixteenth, Hanta Sero. Seventeenth, Denki Kaminari. Eighteenth, Kyoka Jiro. Nineteenth, Toru Higakure. Twentieth, Hitashi Shinso. Twenty-first, Minoru Mineta. Most of them looked at Mineta in pity, as his soul seemed to leave his body. Oh yeah, that whole expulsion thing. I lied, said Shota. Everyone blinked in surprise at this while he continued to explain with a trolling smirk on his face. It was a rational deception to draw out the upper limits of your quirks. I'm safe, cried Mineta as he collapsed to the floor. Of course, it was a ruse, frowned Momo. It was obvious if you think about it. I don't know, mused Izuku. Didn't Principal Nezu warn us about teachers having the freedom to do whatever they want? Momo blinked before slightly shaking, hoping her analysis wasn't off. Well then, since you've gotten your results, go ahead and head back to class, Yon Shoda. Your curriculum sheets are back in the classroom on the first desk. Take one and give them a look over. Shinso, come with me. You look like you could use a nurse, and then I'll escort you back to your classroom. I need to talk with the principal anyways. Fucking fourth. Rage caught Suki in his mind as the rest of the class began to talk lightheartedly. Fine, Deku got first, because of that rubber court being able to use for almost all the events. But how'd I lose to Specky Ponytail Girl in half and half? He glanced at the two other who beat him, noticing Momo was talking with Izuku, while Shoto seemed to stand alone, narrowing his eyes at Izuku. Bastard. Fuck Katsuki, don't fucking look down on me. So how did you get those bruises? Asked Shoda, pointing to the red sores on Shinso's hands. He suspected he had more on the legs due to the fact Shinso was slightly limping. I went over my body's natural limit, hissed Shinso in pain, before explaining how he managed to brainwash himself and expend all his body strength at each event. Impressive, noted Shoda, you thought of this yourself. Er no, winced Shinso, I never thought I could use it like this until Midoriya, the first rank student, suggested it to me. Shoda just made a humming noise, thinking about him. After the ball throw, Izuku never showed that secondary part of his quirk. He knew those arcs of lightning somehow empowered Izuku further, but he never did it again during the rest of the trials. It wasn't something he could just call out on, saying he wasn't doing his best. Izuku did get number one in the ranking, and he helped Shinso excel himself. Not only that but if he did call him out, he would have to also call out Shoto for not using the fire part of his quirk. He knew all of 1AS quirks as he had already reviewed the files. And forcing them to redo it would just waste valuable time he didn't want to use. Shota sent Shinso on his way, reminding him that though he was now a reserve ranking member, that did not mean his position was safe. Shinso would participate in some of the Foundation hero training, but not all of them. Shota then met with All Might, had a brief discussion about his expulsion rates with him before leaving. Wu, that was nerve-wracking, piped to Chako as the day ended. I was truly fooled by Azawa sensei stated Tenya, I even thought, this is the best of the best. And so on. Now I see how the teachers here encourage deception. I'm not too sure if he was just joking, frowned Izuku, something tells me that he wasn't, and just decided on a whim, whether or not to expel the lowest score. I'm afraid that Izuku is right, said Momo, looking up from her cell phone, which was the latest pair product, I was looking up expulsions from Yue, and Aizawa's sensei's name appeared in a lot of them. With a click, she projected a screen from her phone to show people ranting about being kicked out of Yue, the majority of which ranted about Shota. She scrolled down to show that a whole group of students were expelled, and tried to petition to the principal to let them back in and expel Shota. That case failed. Geez, we really have a strict teacher, Gulta Chako, and all the teachers have this power. Well if we do our best and show them all no reason for expulsion, we'll make it through. Stated Izuku. Yay. Cheered the other three. Hey, did you wait long? Asked Itsuka as she walked into the group, accompanied by Yui and Sasuna. She quickly introduced them to the rest of them, and were soon chattering with each other. By the way, who were the recommendation students in your class? Asked Momo to Isuka. Yuzo Hananuki via academic and Satsuna got the practical one, replied Itsuka. Impressive, complimented Momo to Satsuna. Nah, I got lucky. Smiled Satsuna. It was supposed to go to someone else, but suddenly the person declined the recommendation, and so it fell to me. Why would anyone refuse such a prestigious recommendation? Asked Tenya in a gasp. Perhaps some life crisis prevented him from attending. 
offered Yui with a straight face as usual. I do not think it is that morbid, shouted Tenya, animatedly waving his hand in a chopping motion. Whatever, commented Satsuna, let's get off this depressing topic. Anyone wanna head over to the nearest MCD to celebrate our first day? The students of 1A shivered at that sentence, confusing the trio of girls until Izuku managed to explain what happened for their first day. Geez, your teacher sounds tough pouted Satsuna, our homeroom teacher is Sekijiro Kansas, hero named the blood hero. Vlad King. He zoodles of fun, though a bit strict and uptight. They arrived at the bus station before saying their goodbyes, as they all had to take different buses, some having to take an additional subway station. Tenya could have just run all the way back home, but he obeyed the laws of no cork usage allowed. Only heroes were exempt from such a thing, and he was not one yet. So, think anything exciting will happen tomorrow? Asked Izuku as he rode the same bus with Momo, Achako, and Katsuki. Katsuki was sitting in the back of the bus far away from them. Maybe we'll finally know who the foundation hero teacher is, suggested Achako. Though, I think I already know who it is smirked Izuku to himself. Whoever it is, must be one of the top pros here in Japan, offered Momo, maybe someone in the top 20s at least. Perhaps best genius. He's been known to help educate or train other heroes on his spare time. Speaking of training, do you guys have a gym that you go to? Asked Izuku, actually, does UA have a gym for us to use? All students who are in the heroics course, have free access to select gyms outside of school, explained Momo, UA has the most contacts in the eastern part of Japan, while Shinketsu dominates the western part. The most choose to use the one in here already. Katsuki perked up on this, already planning to see if the local gym near his place was one. Ah, makes sense, not at Izuku, though he had the home gym set at his house already, did you two want to jog together sometime? I usually take morning jogs every day to wake myself up at Tagaba Beach. There's a bathhouse nearby, or if you want, you can head to my place to take a shower and change clothes. That sounds like a good idea, not at Momo. Ahe, <laughs> I have trouble getting up in the morning, blushed Chako. Don't worry, I'll be sure to wake you up, placated Momo. A morning jog on the beach sounds like an excellent way to wake up and exercise. We must push ourselves to show our worth as upcoming heroes. They soon arrived at their stop, where Izuku walked Momo and Achako to their home residence before jogging back to his own home. On the way back, though, he saw Katsuki leaning on a pole waiting for him. What do you want? Asked Izuku. You didn't use that secondary part of your quirk, accused Katsuki. Before Izuku could defend himself, Katsuki gave a scoff and continued, whatever. I'm only here to tell you I'm going to fucking join you in your morning jogs. Can't let you fucking pull ahead of me that easily. At that note, Katsuki turned around and left. Was it his way of saying we're rivals and that he wants to train with me? Said Izuku as he tilted his head in confusion, oh whatever. Need to get back home to work out and fill up my hero analysis notebook. The next morning at 6.30, Izuku was on the beach stretching his legs, wearing green shorts and a green tank top. Next to him was Katsuki, also doing his stretches, wearing black shorts and a black tank top. Both had their gym bags tossed to the side. Where the fuck are the girls? Growled Katsuki as he leaned back to stretch his spine. Ah, there you are. Both boys turned to see Chako in her white shirt and black jogging pants, while Momo. Izuku had to stem a nosebleed while Katsuki looked like he just didn't care. Momo had chosen to wear a black sports bra that seemed to enhance her bust, as well as short shorts. Sorry it took so long, Chako took a little longer to wake up, apologized Momo. Haha, <laughs> sorry, told you I wasn't really a morning person, laughed Chako nervously. Alright, let's get this started, laughed Izuku, if you get tired, don't hesitate to take a breather stand to the side. I usually jog for an hour straight, mixing it with dashes every now and then. I have markers placed from one end to another, so when we reach it, we turn around. Just go at your own pace. Half an hour later, Achako had to drop out, panting as she sat on the warm sandy floor, while watching the others continue to jog. She reminded herself that she would have to start running more, remembering her own placement in the endurance test. Momo dropped out 20 minutes later, opting to watch and relax, though not as out of breath as Achako. The two girls began to help each other stretch so as not to get cramps while the boys kept running. The last 10 minutes ended up in sprints as Katsuki and Izuku started to get competitive. They would reach one end, break, turn around at the same moment, and dash off once again. In the end, they ran out of time to keep continuing. That was a good workout, said Momo as she stretched her arm, unintentionally pushing her chest forward. She smirked as she saw Izuku flushing, while Katsuki merely scoffed and looked away. Achako pouted before turning around and bending down, making sure her own butt was visibly protrude. Her sweat had made her pants stick onto her skin, emphasizing her curve. Oh look at the time, we should head back to our home soon to take a shower, change, and get ready for school. Shouted Izuku before running away, leaving a trail of sand. Katsuki merely howled in laughter as the two girls glared at each other before breaking into smirks. So you two want him? Asked Katsuki as he managed to calm down. Both girls whipped their heads and stared at Katsuki. 
Hey, I ain't the dense and oblivious one, Yon Katsuki, fucking Deku is. If you want to get into his pants, go for it. Got nothing to do with me. I'm pretty sure Side Ponytail also wants him. None of you girls are my type anyway. Momo and Ichako could only stare at Katsuki. It sounded like he was insulting Izuku while also being nice to him at the same time. It was really confusing. Shit, I'm hungry, grumbled Katsuki as he finished off his canteen of water, Kachia a skull spiky ponytail and round face. He can never get anyone's name can he? Sighed Momo as Katsuki left, I don't think I've heard him say anyone's name. It's always by a person's feature. I think Deku is the only one whom he actually calls by a name, even though he makes it an insult, piped to Chako, explaining how Izuku and Deku could be read the same way. Perhaps deep inside Bakugo-san, Izuku is someone that he does still care about, observed Momo. The two girls blinked at this before snickering at this conclusion. Come on, the cook should be preparing our breakfast by now, said Momo as she pulled a chako with her. It would be another bright day for school. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.